Hey guys, this is Thomas over here, NurseMoneyTalk.com, and I got a question for you. Do you think you should take the very first job you get right after nursing school? Like, I, I know what you're, what you're probably thinking. I spent all this time in school. I finally passed boards, and I just want to get out there and just start working as a nurse. Here, here's the deal though, because in this video, like I hope that you will see that there is actually a lot of importance behind the very first job you get right after nursing school. Before I get into that, if you're not already subscribed, I want to go ahead and invite you to hit that subscribe button on this channel. I talk about all things related to nurse, nursing student, and of course, nurse life. Lastly, if you are looking for a job, make sure to check out the job board on Nurse Money Talk by going to nursemoneytalk.com forward slash jobs. You'll see the link on the screen and it will also be in the descriptions below. Now, let's go ahead and look at the very first job you get after nursing school because even though it's overlooked, I do think that the job that you get after nursing school does play a, a huge factor in your career. And in some instances, I will, will argue that the first job can set the tone for your nursing career and even in some instances change the trajectory of your nursing career as a, as a whole because, um, you know, just even just based on the connections that you build, which facilities you start in and, and all this other stuff, there's a huge importance in that. And the, the first piece of really looking at what job you accept after nursing school is really looking at what is the specialty that you're gonna, you know, that you're gonna get into. Now, I've made other videos kind of talking a little bit about just this thing on like, oh, every nurse should start in med surge or all this other stuff. And I do think that that is a bunch of baloney. Um, I do think that you can start in any nursing specialty that you want, that you'll be trained in it, and you can have a successful career. With that said, I'm not naive that depending on what your long-term goal is, certain specialties are going to be more conducive for you moving in that direction. The one example I've gave before was that if you like mental health and that's what you wanna do, then, and you know for sure that's what you wanna do, then there's no point kind of going back and forth and whatever and you know starting off in med surge or the ICU just so you can wind up um, in mental health after two years, but oh yeah, I was miserable for those two years because that's not what I really wanted to do. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but if you look at where you're going, so for instance, right, if you're wanting to, if your long-term goal is to get into the ICU, then, and let's say you wanted to get into the ICU, right? that was your actual goal or you want to get into like maybe even a sus subspecialty like the transplant ICU or whatever, right? And let's say you tried, you couldn't get in and now you're looking at what your options are. Well, if your options are like med surge or a nursing home job or, or, or I don't know, or like a mental health job, then it would make sense that you would probably push towards the med surge job or if you had like a step down job or that you were offered that you would go towards that because that is the closest thing to where your end goal is. And so there is a lot of um, importance in the specialty that you get into really looking at specifically on what your long term game plan is. The second thing that I think is often overlooked is the employer that, um, that, that you get into, like who offers you the job. Now, I do think that in a lot of ways that, you know, we get fixated on, well, this is the specialty and this is how much I'm, I'm getting made. And I understand why that's important. You get the specialty you want and then you're gonna get the pay that you want, but yet we, you know, you 
we kind of overlook everything else and there's a lot of importance in who your who your employer actually is because that employer can dictate um you know just by them being either small or big player poorly run well run like your experience they can dictate what opportunities are even available to you right so if you get into for instance like a small um, facility versus like a big facility where this big facility does everything under the sun it makes it really easy for you to then be able to transfer from one place to the other because when you look at how facilities normally do things like if they're posting a job it typically goes out to internal candidates first and then they will post it out to external candidates the other thing really to to keep in mind is that you have heard the slogan like just trying to get your foot in the door once you get your foot in the door it's easier than to move around and i think that's the situation you can be in because if it's a big facility and you're, let's say you wanted it, wanted the ICU, right? Like you had a couple different options, right? And one of them was a bigger facility, but let's say it was working med surge. And so you go to med surge at that facility. Well, what if you, if you get a moment, go talk to the ICU manager, you know, show them that you're interested, start networking that way. Those are one example of how the, if it's a big facility or certain facilities might be worth a consideration just because of the opportunities that will be available to you there. The other thing, and this is my third point that really makes a huge difference is how much you're going to get paid. So I know pay is an important deal, right? But I don't, sometimes I think it often gets overlooked because if I remember when I was in business school, one of the things that was always harped on was that the thing that determines your next pay is going to be how much you're making now. So the thing that's going to play a big influence on how much money you'll make the next year, the following year will be your current pay. And this is affected by either, you know, even a raise, you think about it, you know, if you get a 3% raise, well, if you're making $30 an hour versus $35 an hour, 3% raise, you'll be, you would have had a higher pay rate at the $35 versus at the $30. Or even looking at when you're going to a new facility, right? You know, a lot of times they'll try to match it up with what you've been making previously and only give you a marginal increase or, or whatever. And so I think pay is something that really needs to be considered when you're looking at accepting a job, because I think when you really think about it, that's kind of um, really taking into account what you're worth. What is your time worth? And. I mean, that's just the truth, right? I mean, if you really think about it, you spent all this time, all this money to get a degree, right? And now your goal is to work, make a difference in people's lives, in patients' lives, of course. But at the same time, it's, you gotta make your ends meet, you gotta be able to pay your bills, take care of yourself and your loved ones as well. So don't underestimate the importance of pay and at the same time, don't underestimate the importance of all uh, the two other things that I mentioned, because ultimately, I think when it comes to should you take the first nursing job that you get offered is you need to figure out what your goals are and you need to see if that first nursing job lines up with your goals. So that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you very soon in that next video.